Hey everyone, Spencer from 45 Drives with another Tuesday Tech Tip. Uh, today we're going to be talking about ArcLoud. So, what is rclone? Um, basically, rclone is a backup method uh, that is meant for file system to object storage or from object storage to object storage. Um, so it's a very convenient way to either backup existing file system data you have onto a cloud provider or backup object data on something like our Ceph platform to another object provider. Um, so we have some examples set up that we're going to go through in just a couple seconds here. All right, so I have my little scratch pad here with all the information that we need to get this set up. Um, so it has the install script for our clone, um, as well as the access information for both a Backblaze bucket, which is what we're going to um, back up our file system data to, and my own Ceph bucket, which we'll back up to as well. Um, so to get started, we'll simply get our clone installed with that script I mentioned. So let me copy that over into here. And that'll go ahead and download and run that script all at once. So with our clone all installed, we'll go ahead and bring up the config menu. Uh, the config menu is really robust in our clone. We have a lot of options. Um, to start with, we'll make a new remote. And we'll just call this one Backblaze, because we're going to use it for our Backblaze bucket. We have a huge list of various um, S3 providers that we can use. The one we're interested in is number five right there, um, Backblaze B2. Um, so we'll go ahead and select five. And we'll need to give all these standard S3 config options that you would expect to give anything really, um, starting with like an application key ID, which is what I have right there, and then our user key ID. For the rest of these options in the config, we can just go with the defaults. And then finally, yes for OK. And we can see that we now have a new remote called Backblaze. So with that in mind, we can now use that remote to see what is in that bucket. So we're going to issue a command rclone ls. We're going to give it that remote. And then the name of my bucket, which as you can see, is tech tip bucket. And we'll go ahead and wait for that to retrieve the information that is on that bucket, which should only take a couple seconds, hopefully, if internet participates. There we go. Um, so you can see I have two different files in that bucket, uh, a byte metric PNG and then the actual R clone setup in a zip format. So with that in mind, we have a bucket that we can access from our local file system. So we can do all kinds of stuff with that information. Um, if we do a quick ls here, we can see I have made a test file, testfile.txt. So we're going to move that file over into Backblaze. Do our clone copy, give it the test file, and then again we're going to give it Backblaze, and then the bucket that we're moving to. Another cool thing about our clone is they have this progress flag, so we can actually watch how long this file takes to move. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and get that command on the go. And we can see our progress has started there. Um, fairly basic progress readout, you know, elapsed time, however much data we're transferring. All right, and we can see that file has now transferred over. Um, so that's kind of an example of how we can set up Backblaze. And of course, you can set up automated cron jobs to do these backups on an entire directory structure rather than just on an individual file like I've done here. Um, and we have a full guide on how that works as well. Um, so what we're going to do next is show you how a Ceph setup would work on this. So our clone, as you saw in that config menu, is compatible with a wide variety of S3 providers. Um, so we'll make a new one, and we're going to call this one Ceph. So in our list of S3 providers here, on number four, we see Amazon S3 compliant storage. This includes anything like AWS, AWS Ceph, DigitalOcean, whatever. Um, for us, Ceph, so we're going to select that. And then on the provider menu, three is Ceph. So um, for the most part in this wizard, we can use the defaults. Um, so for credentials, we'll use the defaults and then provide both our access and secret key, which I've generated up here. So there's our access key and our secret key. We can go through the defaults for pretty much everything else here except for the endpoint address, which we'll actually need to give 
the Ceph endpoint that we're using to connect to our S3 storage. In this case, it's this 45127 address. For location constraint, again, default, ACL, default, uh, encryption, default is fine. KMS key, also default is fine. And we're okay with not doing any advanced configs. And then yes, this is okay. So what we've done now is we've set up another S3 type, which is Ceph. Um, so if we quit out of our rclone config, we can issue another rclone ls of Ceph. And then my bucket is called Spencer test. And we can see all the files that are in that bucket. So now what we can do is we can copy files from that Spencer test bucket to our backblaze bucket. Um, so let's pipe in Spencer test. Let's go with keyring. And then from there, we'll go to our backblaze bucket. T -t bucket. And that'll start copying over that file. So this is a quick and easy way that you can move files from either a file system to block storage or from one block storage to another block storage. All right, so that's how we can set up our clone to go from file system to object or from object to object storage. Um, there's all kinds of other uses for our clone. Like I mentioned, we can set up cron jobs to automate these processes. And the knowledge base article that we'll be linking in the description is for specifically Backblaze and how to set up our clone with Backblaze. But any S3 provider generally can interface with our clone just fine by following the same key steps. With that in mind, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.